We've been seeing a lot of questions and concerns about methanol or methyl alcohol lately. They're the same thing, by the way. Most of the questions and concerns seem to be centered around methanol poisoning, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but there's a couple things I want to say first. A few people have asked if you should or can remove the methanol from your brew. The short answer is you really can't remove the methanol without altering the brew substantially in some way. It, you're either removing all of the alcohol or changing its structure and flavor components drastically to try to do that. Removing just one component is really, really difficult to do. Before we get too much further though, what is methanol? Methanol is one of the components produced by almost all fermentations. It's toxic to humans and too much of it can actually do serious harm to your body. Methanol also takes longer for the body to process and so in effect it stays with you longer, therefore it can do more harm than say ethanol, which is the alcohol that you want in your brews. Methyl alcohol or methanol is produced in nearly all fermentations. I know, I said it already, but it bears repeating. It's present in commercial wines and meads and ciders too. Beer has some, but a very small amount. So your homebrew beer, wine, cider, and mead has no more or no less methanol than its commercial counterparts. Same stuff, whether you bought it in the store or you made it yourself. Fruits contain pectin, and the breakdown of pectin is what produces methanol. So that's why like a fruity wine could end up with a little bit more methanol than say a beer, which is made from grains. Even when products are distilled, they still contain amounts of methanol. And actually when they're distilled, it, it concentrates the methanol. You can't remove it all. And that's why some brandies, apricot brandy in particular, have fairly high amounts of methanol. So the idea that you can boil it off or distill it in some way and get rid of methanol, again, it's just inaccurate. Something interesting is that if you use pectic enzyme during fermentation, like when you if you put it in in the beginning, it actually produces a little bit more methanol because you're breaking down the pectins in the fruits. Now, of course, you have to have fruits in the first place or else it won't break them down, but it does produce a little bit more methanol. Now, nothing to worry about because the amount is very, very small. And as you'll see as I get further on, why even that small amount really doesn't make much difference. So it's nothing to worry about, just good to be aware of. In fact, the amount of methanol produced during fermentation is quite small. The actual amount varies because different products have different amounts of pectin, which would break down differently, and how it's broken down produces different amounts. But in general, a good rule of thumb is about 10% of the alcohols produced can be methanol. Okay, I gotta do some math here, so I have notes. So I'm gonna be reading a little bit here. I'm sorry for not looking directly at you as I'm talking to you. Uh, in a typical 750 ml bottle of wine at say 12% ABV, there is 90 mils of alcohol, okay? That's about 3.2 ounces. So if 10% of that alcohol is methanol, there's about nine milliliters, nine, nine milliliters or one third of an ounce of methanol in the whole bottle, all right? So really small amount. For reference, the danger level of dose for methanol is 60 to 240 mils, or about two to eight ounces. Now, the reason there's a variance there is because body weight, you know, the, a larger person needs more to be toxic than a smaller person would. So in theory, it would take six bottles of the wine I just described, that 12% ABV wine, drank in quick succession before the body could process anything to be a dangerous level of methanol. Now, what I mean by that is, you would literally have to drink it all before your body could start processing the first bit. And that's just to be, uh, you're starting. That's the basic minimum dangerous dose. A lethal dose is actually higher, but this is dangerous, okay, where it could cause problems for you. Funny thing though, is that the cure for methanol poisoning is actually ethanol. So while you're getting some methanol as you're drinking, you're getting far more ethanol in the same drink. So it's kind of curing you while it's harming you at the same time. Also, by the time you drank six bottles of wine in quick succession that way, you probably have some serious pain in your stomach because that is 1.2 gallons of liquid. I don't care who you are, that's a lot to take in nearly instantaneously. And this isn't even getting into the amount of alcohol that you'd be drinking at that point. That would be 19.2 ounces of alcohol, of actual alcohol, okay? That is the equivalent of the amount of alcohol in two whole bottles of whiskey, okay? So that's a lot, that is a lot of alcohol. I think you'd have far more problems from the alcohol consumption than from the methanol. And something to take note of is even at these huge quantities, there's not enough methanol to do any real damage to you because of all the things that I just described. 
So, is methanol a problem? Of course it is, just not for home brewers. Best bit of advice, don't add rumming alcohol or wood alcohol to your brews. Ferment things, do it the way we talk about in all of our videos, and you're gonna be perfectly safe when it comes to methanol. It's just not something to worry about when it comes to home brewing. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.